It may feel like a mistake that we're touching on this movie, Mason. But the people demanded it, right? People demanded it. We Mm -hmm. threw up a poll on Patreon. We said, hey, what do you want to see? What would you like us to do? We were hoping for something good, but we're doing this, aren't we? Yeah, and we said, please don't make us suffer. (laughs) But, you know, you can't say that in this day and age because people will make you do that. So we're watching Fantastic Four from 94. That's right. You remember remember watching it in the theatres? Remember having a grand time in the (laughs) theatres with Fantastic Four 94? No, wrong. That's right. It wasn't released ever, right? It wasn't released, but this has been released. So because of that, you should give it a like for one. Yeah, so what what do you know of the history of this movie? To the best of my understanding, which is limited, the rights to it were picked up from Stan Lee for a very small amount of money Mm -hmm. uh, by a production company, and then they shopped it around, but nobody was willing to pay the amount of money it would take to make a good Fantastic Four film. So they went to, uh, like, schlock movie producer Roger Corman, who was willing to make a bad film for significantly less money. But also the most money that they'd ever spent on one of their films before. Huh. Yeah. And doesn't it show it? Looks incredible. (laughs) It looks slightly worse than, like, a TV show of the same era. I want to get to why that is. Okay. Uh, The the budget was about one to two million. But I think you can't talk about this movie without talking about the documentary from 2015 called Doomed, Mm. the untold story of Roger Corman's Fantastic Four. And I'm so glad I watched this documentary after I watched the movie because I had so many questions and nearly all of them were answered in this documentary. I'm like, why does this look like shit? Oh, (laughs) what's this? Oh, I recommend that. It was mostly about bad stuff and bad sets, right? (laughs) Yeah, pretty Uh much. Bad costumes. Well, it's not only that, it's the story of how it was all covered up who actually made away like a bandit at the end of it all. Right, because this, for reasons which I assume we'll get to at some point, was never released to cinemas. No, Uh. and was never intended to. But the thing is as well, the people working on it, on the production side of things... They must have been well clued into that, right? Well, no, because they would have put in (laughs) way less effort. And I know it looks like less effort, but watching this documentary, there is heart and effort and a real kind of team bonding experience with the actors and those involved to make it something. Would you say that everybody involved really kind of tried their best? Yes. Well, let's make fun of them then. <laughs> let's do that for 10 minutes. The thing about this as well, before it was leaked, and I should point out the version that has been leaked is not an official version. It's not the film version. That version is still missing, possibly destroyed. Okay. This is like a VHS copy. So if you've got the footage from the original trailer, which was released to comic cons and various things at the time, it looks much better. It's still very low budget, but Uh it doesn't look like it's filmed on your dad's camcorder. The people involved in this would like the original print to be discovered so it would get leaked online and people could fix the special effects. Oh, yeah. In fact, whoever's editing this has done an incredible job souping up all the special effects. Well done, Ben. Good on you, Ben. (laughs) Thanks for putting in the extra time, for free, I might add, to make this really something. You've really uh, gone above and beyond the Call of Duty for free. (laughs) Marvel, though, before it was leaked, they kind of denied this existed. They were like, no, no, there's no, there's never been a Fantastic Four movie. What are you talking about? The thing is, though, I think it's... Fantastic. No. Mr. Fantastic? Should, it's bad. Oh. No. But... Like a storm. It might be the most accurate on-screen representation. Yeah. It just looks like shit. Right. Like, the costumes are right, but they don't look good. The thing, Mm. it's a fair effort. Apparently the most amount of money was spent on that suit. The lips look good? Yeah, well, that was... It's a different actor for the the guy who plays Ben Grimm and then the thing, because he actually gets smaller. And if you notice, right, (laughs) the thing is significantly smaller. Ah, the Doctor Doom costume looks pretty good. I agree. But just poorly made. And I mean, that plot-wise, it's quite similar to some very early issues of the Fantastic Four. Yes. But the problem there is translating... A lot of the time, translating an old comic book directly... It's a bad idea. Yeah. Also, I don't know if you've seen Michael Bailey Smith, who's probably the most well-known actor from this because he went on to be in Charmed and do a bunch of other stuff. Uh-huh. Now he just looks like the thing. You could, you could put him back in that role now. But Good it for him. Work. This movie's weird, isn't it? Which part? The part where Ben Grimm knocks over a blind woman's statue and then lifts her off the ground and she's like, what are you doing? And he physically picks He's up He's like, it's okay. Don't. I'm here to help you while I lift you up and you have no idea what's happening. Yeah, that's weird. It's weird that the two main characters, you know, some would say there's nothing weird about a man living in like a house with some children that are not related to him and one of them's in love with him. Yes. So I, would, weird I, would, at all. I would say it is weird. She's 12 and he's 38 maybe. <laughs> sure, right? I was confused until I saw the documentary of why is 
they're a leprechaun stealing a diamond for a lot of this movie. What's right. with that? It's the jeweler. It's the jeweler. I looked it up. I'm like, who's the jeweler? Maybe he isn't it's, anyone. It's a, I know. And it was. It had a wiki, and I went there, and it's like only appearance. Fantastic <laughs> Four, nineteen ninety four, never released. Yeah. So he's more confusing, I think. And look, right from the top, why is he called the jeweler? Mm. I mean, he's wearing a jeweler's loop on his eye. Yes. But he's just he's the mole man. Exactly. He's the mole man, and he lives in the sewers. No, yes. no other element about him suggests him being a jeweler beyond that he wants to steal a big diamond. Which is, I guess... What jewelers do? (laughs) Yeah, that's what jewelers do. They want to steal big diamonds. They have plenty of diamonds, but their lust for diamonds can never be satiated as they want to steal more diamonds. Exactly. But But the reason why he's not the Mole Man, that's who they wanted to use. Mm -hmm. But Marvel were very much... You have the rights to these specific characters. You've okay. got Fantastic Four, you've got Doctor Doom, you've got some other bits and pieces. You don't have the Mole Man, you can't use him. Okay. So that's why they were not on board for this at all. The other thing, did you notice that a lot of Doom's lines were muffled? Yeah, his I've written that, I wrote that down as a note <laughs> because rather than recording his dialogue by a voiceover ADR or anything like that, he's just talking through a muffly mask. Yeah, it's like Darth Vader before, I don't know if you've heard that, before they dub him with James Earl Jones. It's yeah, right. absolute nonsense. You are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. Sometimes you can hear it and other times it's just <laughs> He's also, he loves a loves a little joke, this version of Doom. He's like, welcome to Latveria, take your take your family for a vacation. Ha 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 ha. My favorite part is where after all his minions attack the Fantastic Four and he comes back in. He's like, let's see what's happening here. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> they've defeated all my minions and they've left. <laughs> yes. But the actor who played Doctor Doom, mm-hmm. the idea was that they were gonna come back and re-record the dialogue. And he was like, please give me another shot of this. You cannot leave it in this current state. Okay. I'll do it. I'll come in and I'll do it. But, but they barred the doors. They wouldn't let him back in. <laughs> they were like, no, it's a Roger Corman production. <laughs> After they'd filmed it, there was no money for post-production. All That's right. why all the special effects look terrible. There were special effects? Well, the bit where Johnny Storm goes full flame on. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. And he's racing a laser, laser. And then he gets hit by the laser and he's just... It's spinning around. It's spinning around. It's like yeah, over. Uh-huh. It, it looks atrocious, but that's why. But you notice, though, there's also a lot of choices behind the acting, intentional things. You know how Doom is very emotive with his hands? Mm-hmm. They based it off Mussolini. They were like, do what Mussolini did. So that's why it is the way it is. And that's why all the trains run on time in that movie. That's right. Nobody nobody is caught out by a late train in the movie Fantastic Four. Uh, some stuff that I love about this movie. Let's see. So Reed and Doom, they're best friends in college. Yes. And then Doom is mysteriously, he's killed in an, in an accident when he performs an illegal science experiment for reasons that are not are never clearly explained. He's electrocuted for three to four minutes. That's exactly right. And then years later... Reed Richards meets a mysterious masked man named Doom. Who is it? And it takes him 15 minutes of screen time, because I timed it, for him to figure out that it's actually his friend, Victor Von Doom. This guy, Doom, that knows everything about him and yeah. knows, knows all his, his skills and weaknesses. It's his old friend, Victor Von Doom. And he only figures it out because Johnny Storm's like, hey, man, the only other person who knows all your science stuff is your old friend, Victor Von Doom. And he's like, what? Doom? But it's, it's also it's 15 minutes of screen time. But it's actually in the run of the movie. Oh, it could be days. It could, I think it's days, yeah. <laughs> Another good thing about this. Yes. There was an orchestra rented, a 40-piece orchestra. The composers, David and Eric uh, Worst, they paid for it themselves, $6,000. Huh. And I think the soundtrack of this is quite good. That comes through, I think, yes. in this, yeah. Mm. But that is a result of not the production company. No, that's true, That's people yeah. going out of their way to, you know, wanting this to be a big break and wanting to make it the best version that they could. Mm-hmm. So six grand for nothing, no. essentially. <laughs> right? yeah. Yes. James, what else did you love about this movie? I, I mean, they, they're using their powers, aren't they? <laughs> they <laughs> sure uh, are. They sure are. Sue does maybe one force field. She does, inexplicably, and it's never referred to ever again. Okay, so I think the producers of this movie kind of confused invisibility with intangibility. Because yes. there's any number of times two thugs are running at her from opposite directions, she turns invisible, and then they collide with each other. And then it turns out that she turned invisible and ducked. But I mean, yeah. you could have just ducked. You could have just ducked. What do you think of Reed's stretching powers? Uh, I mean, bad, obviously. Yeah, bad. So, but I yeah. think there's like a fun kind of hokiness yeah. to it. Yes. I love the bit at the end where he's got a big waggly arm at the top <laughs> of the car. Oh, when they get married at just the end. Just waving away. When every member of the Fantastic Four gets married <laughs> at the end. They all get married no, they, they, the they don't end. all get married, but they, they're all there for the wedding. Except Sue is the only one who changed her clothes. <laughs> Everybody else is just in their Fantastic Four <laughs> uniform. So that's get fun. Up. Terrific. Okay, so here's a, a thing that I enjoyed very much in this movie. It's just a little scene, but sure. obviously pre-superpowers, the Fantastic Four fly up into space and the accident takes place. They careen back down to Earth. First thing that I really enjoyed is that when they crash down to Earth, they all wake up separately. They get up and find each other. 
And at no point are they concerned that Sue Storm is alive or no, dead. No, Johnny's like, point. yeah, we're, we're all alive, all of us, all we're three of us. We're all heroes. And they're like, we, we are all heroes. <laughs> it's great stuff. And then, then Sue shows up and they're like, oh, that's right, the fourth person was with us. <laughs> what I also love about that crash is they explode in space and fall from space and then they land in Latveria all about 20 feet from each other. That's fine. Don't even worry Pretty about, cool, right? about it. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. So a trailer was made. Oh, yes. The cast and crew were touring different comic events okay in 1993 and presumably in costume it's some of it yeah like they bought the thing's head yeah, right. but the thing is as well they were doing this promotion for free so they were like well this is going to be a big break for us uh-huh. we believe in this film we believe what we've done we haven't seen the final product as of yet mm-hmm. but we're hyped for this and we, we want this to go places so the actor who played ben grimm michael smith he ended up paying 12 grand in total for him and other people to fly to different events. Yeah, right. And they paid for their own publicists and stuff like that. All of that stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh Until they got a cease and desist on promotion. From who, James? (laughs) So this is the point where they found out that this movie was always going to be in the bid. Yes, right. Fox basically wanted to work on a bigger budget version with Chris Columbus, who was very interested in discovering America. He was, well, you know, the discovery, it's, it's, a, it's a loose term. Isn't, isn't it, it though? Yeah, that's, yeah sorry <laughs> yeah. about that. But it was suspected that uh, Bernard Eichner, who was in charge of this production, took a big check from Fox on the proviso that they never released this uh, film. Big novelty check. Exactly. And you can't hide that from people, can you? That's right. You know that you've taken a bribe because it's a big check. The work print was then taken. Mm-hmm. People involved in it tried to recover it. They went to the storage facility where they thought it was. They were like, we're going to bust it out. Oh, yeah. It wasn't there. Should be a movie based on that. That's right. And Roger Corman got a $1 million check for shelving it. So basically all the... His butt? (laughs) Maybe. You'd have to speak to him. (laughs) Right? Seriously, though, the million dollars he got is about the same as it cost to make the movies. Yeah. that's That's a great deal for him. Absolutely it is. Because that money... Believe it or not, as some people sometimes think it should work this way in economics, it's supposed to trickle down, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's right. But no, that didn't happen at all. A lot of the higher-ups took really big checks to kill this. Wow. But it's suspected, and I didn't realise this, Avi Arad did this. So you might know him from producing a lot of the Fox X-Men stuff, Mm -hmm. Spider-Man films. He was in charge of a lot of the MCU for a time being until Kevin Feige kind of sidestepped him. And he's responsible for a lot of good stuff, Mm -hmm. but then ruining Spider-Man. Yeah, right. Uh, I heard that he personally purchased some of the, uh, the prints of the movie and burned them. Yes. Like personally burned yes, them that, in his backyard in an oil drum. That is the rumour. Because what he wanted to do, he was in charge of the X-Men on TV at the time, which was around the same time as this, yep. a very popular show. So he wanted to do that for films. And so to transition, he didn't want this brand to be tarnished before the films mm. even got off the ground. But I think this movie wouldn't have necessarily hurt the Marvel brand from coming out. I think it probably wouldn't have been as remembered if it hadn't have been this kind of folklore that's true, yeah. and, and build up. So I should point out, a lot of guys involved in this did get work off the back of this. None uh-huh. of them are destitute living in the streets. Yes. Some of the people involved in the production who took money actually offered up other projects for people oh. in this, which was which was really nice. But then, of course, in the early 2000s, bootlegs of this started appearing. Did you, had you seen this before no, now? No, I've never seen it before now. Yeah. And I love it, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> Got some alternate casting here, though, before I'm we ready. wrap things up. Okay. Mark Ruffalo auditioned for the role of Doctor Doom. My goodness. Yeah, and Patrick Warburton uh, for Ben Grimm. There's mm. some famous names thrown into the mix. And uh, I have to mention this because if we don't, we'll get the comments. But Arrested Development. Season Arrested four. Development. It's a uh, fantastic four plot. <laughs> Put it right. in there. Daddy needs to get his rocks off. Yep. Arrested Development. We remember. We saw it. <laughs> we saw it and we know it. Yeah, we know it. We're aware. That was a segment of the show called, we, we mentioned that thing that you might want us to talk about. Because we saw it and we know it. <laughs> yes, that's right. So <laughs> there it is. <laughs> We're back for Caravan of Garbage. We're doing all the Fantastic Four movies. The last week we did, what was it? Fantastic Four 94. Not good. Not good at all, no. But it's there if you want to see it. But here we are for a big number two. That's right. Fox have jumped on board. They were very much like, hey, we've been doing the X-Men. Hey, Spider-Man's a big hit at the moment. Hey, some of the blades are okay. (laughs) Let's do the same for the Fantastic Four. And I'll say this. I think there's some good ideas here. I like the cast, Mm -hmm. but I don't. This fucking sucks. It's not no, good. It's not good. I haven't seen it since. It's not good. This movie's so bad that it made me like the second one a little bit. So, you know what it does? Mm-hmm. And I feel like you had the same problem for the first Spider-Man. It feels like a blank, fake 
stage universe. Yes. You know, all the sets and all, even the street stuff, it just doesn't feel like anything is real. Also, leave a like. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean, though? I do know what you mean. Like if, like, if one of the characters is being harassed on the street by a crowd of onlookers, they all very clearly say, hey, it's you, it's the invisible woman. Turn invisible for us. My friend likes you. Can I get a photo? Like, yeah, she's running away, you know? They're just... <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm here to say my line and then leave. Yeah, What do you think about this, though? Sometimes I love a retcon in a movie, and I think this is one of the best that we've ever seen. Go ahead. Reed Richards. Yes. Grey Temples. It's from the weird space. It's from the space space fog or whatever. That's right. He didn't have Grey Temples before the space event situation disaster. So what do you think about uh, Chris Evans in this? It's a little bit of a contrast because we've seen him as Captain America for so many years. So this is, you know, him in full asshole mode. Yeah. People didn't really... The poor man's Paul Walker. Yeah, people didn't... I wouldn't even say poor man's, but they didn't really take him seriously until, like, your Snowpiercers and your Sunshine, which Mm. is terrific. Because I know there were some people upset and he was reluctant to take on Captain America because like I did one of these and it wasn't you yeah, guys right, all saw right, it. Right, oh, right. oh my god it's so amazing to me that they didn't give him frosted tips it is spellbinding <laughs> you know what I think happened is they did give him frosted tips they worked out very badly they had to shave his head <laughs> you might that's be right, why he's right. got the crew cut <laughs> so in this one Reed Richards has to go like hat in hand to Victor Von Doom to get the money yes to borrow Victor Von Doom space station so they can perform these space experiments and Victor Von Doom is he's got all he's holding all the chips because he's got all the money and all the space stations and he's got Reed's ex-girlfriend boy does he mm. yeah because he didn't understand relationships or something I don't know it's one of those relationships where if they had one conversation about it they'd probably still be together like it right. doesn't feel <laughs> genuine yeah it's like why don't you understand me and he's like well I only understand science and logic <laughs> right <laughs> but there's no logic in love and kisses Reed <laughs> and he's like well uh, oh. You're always trying to stretch yourself, Reed. (laughs) Mm. Yeah, it's a good movie. (laughs) The thing suits okay. And I think it's uh, Michael Chiklis is the thing. It's perfect. He's the best. He's the best thing we've seen. So he apparently was the only one of the cast who was a big fan of the comics. And he really pushed for a non-computer generated character. So he wore this 60 pound latex suit that took him three hours to get in. I bet he regretted that. 30 seconds in putting the suit on. He's like, well, I'm a big fan and I think we've got to do just to this character, so I'm going to put the full prosthetics on. Oh, no, they're on and I hate this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I regret it. They've made the suit now. I can't back out. <laughs> but they couldn't have done a good version of this no. CGI then, I feel. No, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, because if you look at, like, Ang Lee's Hulk. But I guess rocks kind of were easier to, to do than human skin, so maybe it would have looked all right. So if we're going to talk about Sue Storm, I feel like we've got to talk about the action scene. So the two that are maybe in this. Okay. So the first one where everybody claps at the end because the Fantastic Four have saved the day, they caused every single event yes. that happens in that that resulted in, I'd imagine, a lot of deaths because there is a massive car pile There's up. There's a pile up. There's yeah. a pile up that is primarily caused by the thing crashing into the middle of a, of a freeway on a bridge. I thought that truck driver was dead. Mm. When you open the door, he's like, are you all right? I'm like, is this a different truck? <laughs> like is this the earliest appearance of the superhero hip and shouldering a truck and it either crumples or it flips? I think Hellboy did a did one. Uh, did a punch earlier, right? Maybe. Okay, yeah. that, that's probably but it, This yeah. is a big comic book trope that we love. I think Smallville even did it with a bus. That's true. But that I don't is know, absolutely I don't know true. Know when yeah. that happened. But I know what you're referring to because obviously the thing gets to the disaster area first because obviously he's ground zero because he caused it. <laughs> but then the other three have to get to that area to, you know, save the day, obviously. But the, th- the remaining three of the Fantastic Four, they can't get through because there's so many police there's, and cars. There's 19 people in the way. There's no way to get through. But you know who could get through? A naked, invisible woman. <laughs> because in this version, she can't turn her clothes invisible. So it's the only way to, to, for her to properly be invisible is, is take all her clothes off. Yes. Obviously that's the, and then she runs through the crowd and then she becomes visible again and puts her clothes back on. And then, like, five seconds later, the other two show up and they're like, well, we also made it through the crowd. <laughs> Not using our powers or, or anything, really. We just walked through. Was this just an excuse to show Jessica Alba in underpants? I don't know. Well, actually... Tough to say. Well, yeah, because once Jessica Alba was cast, they added that scene. Great stuff. So, yes, in answer to that question, yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. You know what else was good? That he was brooding, of course, because his fiance, who he'd, he'd, he'd given an engagement ring to, yeah. discovered that he was a he had become a horrible orange rock monster and ran away from him. And then afterwards, once he saves the day on the bridge, she goes to that bridge, mm. sees that he's saved the day and everybody's cheering and clapping, takes her engagement ring off and puts it on the ground and leaves. <laughs> like she went there specifically yeah. to, in to, public. in public to end their relationship. <laughs> For good. At his lowest point. Maybe she just wanted to get a good look at him in the daylight. Oh, and just make sure. Yeah. Mm, maybe I could learn to love that weird orange guy. 
Yeah. No, I'd have to go. I'd have to go to brunch with him. <laughs> so <laughs> no, nope. he'd be breaking all those glasses all the time with his <laughs> giant rock hands. That's right. Okay, Doctor Doom. Yes, uh, I don't. Like, so in this version, I don't like So there's been this. many cinematic versions. Good casting. Of Doctor, I'll say Australia's own Julian. Yeah, McMahon. I like that. Son, Son of, of a, a prime, prime minister. minister. Yeah, that's the thing we know, and that other people know, and will tell us unless we tell them first. <laughs> so guess what? We told you first. Also, Stan Lee's in this. We know <laughs> he's the mailman or something. <laughs> is he Willie Lumpkin? I don't know. That's the name of a Marvel mailman. I'm telling you the name. I, I think he is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Willie. So there's been many versions of Doctor Doom in these movies, and I feel like it's not that difficult to just do the comic book version yeah. where he's injured his face in an accident and then he went away for a long time. He didn't he go to space. No, and then he just you know built a suit of armor, became the ruler of Latveria, what etc. Yeah, he's got a little bit of magic and a little little bit of sorcery, and, a, and he's got a lot of technology stuff. But... Right, just do that. But nobody ever wants to do that. He's no. always a weird mutant man, or a. <laughs> in this case, his skin is becoming metal. Or he's something. a metal. He's a metal man. So in this, I think they've gone with because in in different versions, also the way that the reason they all get different powers is, mm. is always different. Oh, Sue, you're so shy. That's why you turn invisible or whatever. <laughs> but in this version, I think they're going with everybody got a like an element. Yes. So fire, wind, earth, water, and metal in this in this case. Yeah, he's sure. metal. And I know he has, in some versions, also got some technopath powers. Yes. But they don't really lean into that side of it. It's just shooting electricity for the yeah. most part and gathering electricity. I'm surprised he didn't gather so much electricity that it was his undoing. Because that's the era for this, isn't it? That's right. There's always a villain taking on too much energy. Mm. The Hulk. And yes. he's the Hulk. That's right. For example. Yes. Indiana Jones. Well, she wanted all the knowledge, but it was too much too knowledge. Too much knowledge, that's right. What an era. Mm. Uh, it's not a good ending, is it? That finale. No, Speaking of action scenes. No, that's right. Especially because this came out a year after The Incredibles. Apparently, a lot of the jokes and things and elements that they put in this movie, they had to take out because they're like, well, The Incredibles made fun of that, so now we can't <laughs> no. do it. The Incredibles is still the best Fantastic Four movie. But I love it how they're testing Johnny's powers earlier. And he's like, I can go really hot. I can burn as hot as the sun. And they're like, don't burn as hot as the sun, you fucking idiot. <laughs> and at the end, they're like, burn as hot as the sun, Johnny. Kill everybody if you have to. We have to stop this weird metal man. But also what I enjoyed about the scene where he's testing his powers, they're like, you're burning as hot as the sun and you'll destroy everything. You'll set fire to the Earth's atmosphere. That's what they said. But since you're not going to stop, we'll just turn these extinguishers on. Yeah, and now right. we've stopped. Just these regular extinguishers. That's what they should have done in Spider-Man 2 when they had the sun. Just right? put some extinguishers regular on Regular extinguishers. It. Wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah, so there's jokes in this. Is there? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, so Chris Columbus, uh, who was originally making this movie, which we talked about before in the 90s, he pushed for a heavily comedic tone along the lines of Batman 66. Mm -hmm. But Tim Story, who came on board off the back of Barbershop and some other hit films, he persuaded the higher-ups to go for a less of an outright kind of comedic tone. He said that would end in disaster, so let's walk the line here. A little bit of jokes, a little bit of dramedy. You know what I mean? Yeah, satisfy no one. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I say. Yeah. I mean, dramedies are... It can be... Would you call this a dramedy? No, but what I'm saying is, I think the MCU, and some people have accused certain movies, and I can't really disagree with it, they go too jokey at the wrong points in time. Sure. Oh, right. But uh -huh. I feel with the MCU, more often than not, the jokes land. They get the balance right. Yeah, but they don't really land here. Here's some things. A uh, segment of the show called, uh, not, not all bad. I guess it's not all bad. Okay, <laughs> okay. cool. Stanley has said that Michael Chiklis is the thing is his favourite performance in any Marvel film ever. Presumably he said that at the time because obviously there's been things that have happened since which are, I like Chiklis. I think he does a good job. Yeah, but, but also Andy Serkis's claw obviously would have taken that. That's right. That's his current favourite. <laughs> Here's some, uh, also some <laughs> alternate casts. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. Here's some alternate casting though. Hugh Jackman was wanted for Reed Richards. I get it. There's also a deleted scene which people may have seen where he actually morphs his face into Wolverine. He's like, do you want me to be more like this, Sue Jackman? Brendan Fraser and oh. George Clooney were considered for Reed Richards. So for the Invisible Woman in this, we had Rachel McAdams, Scarlett Johansson, Elizabeth Banks and Julia Stiles. And for the thing, James Gandolfini. Oh, Sopranos fan. That's right. And David Boreanaz and uh, Tim Robbins and Mel Gibson for Doctor Doom. I think Mel Gibson was having a very public breakdown at the time, but I think he would have really nailed that unhinged Doctor Doom nature. Yes, for sure. Also, do you want to hear about another version of this? Yeah. Specifically, Peyton Reed came on board. Oh, of Ant-Man fame. That's right, of Ant-Man fame. So when Chris Columbus was doing it, he said, I want to use Dennis Quaid and Meg Ryan, who were a couple at the time, for Sue and Reed. Huh. 
But Peyton, that real life chemistry going you on. You know, until he cheated on her a lot and they broke up. That real life chemistry until a bit of divorce. <laughs> That's Love right, it. Yeah. Mm. And also, he pitched his Fantastic Four movie to Fox as a hard day's night. Okay. Uh, but with superheroes. Ah, oh, so they're all they're famous and screaming, yeah. screaming fans running after them. That's kind of fun. Uh, Alex Denioff as Reed Richards. Ah, oh, from Buffy. That's right. Charlie Theron as Sue Storm. From um, other movies? Other, yes. <laughs> you couldn't name one? That was Mad Max. <laughs> sure. Uh, Paul Walker as Johnny Storm. R.I.P. And John C. Riley as Ben Grimm. Like it. Me too. And of course as the villainous Doctor Doom, Jude Law. Jude Law. Yeah, from okay. other movies also. Oh, okay. So I don't mind it. I don't mind that casting either. The young Pope. What I don't understand about this, and we'll talk a bit more about it next week when we cover Rise of the Silver Surfer. Fox had the X-Men and the Fantastic Four and Daredevil. And they didn't ever think, what if we did something with this together? Like like burned it all? Yeah, like burned it all. <laughs> I do have actually a video where I discuss all the different Fox properties and how they plan to blend all of these together at one point. Yeah, right. But I guess they thought, well, no, let's keep it all separate. Nobody wants to see that. But people I remember exclusively at the time and even as, you know, as early as the 90s wanted to see comic book characters cross over mm. into different, not even universes, just Batman goes, hey, there's Superman. Right. You know? I'd watch two hours of that. <laughs> You just keep flying overhead. Yeah. Hey, this Superman. Oh, he's back. Oh, my goodness. He's quick. Yeah, yeah. right? Makes me really wonder why I do this, because he could solve all the crime. This is a big hit, though. Didn't yeah. get a sequel for nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, on an $87 million budget, it made $333 million, and still, to this day, is the highest grossing Fantastic Four movie. If you don't count the Incredibles films. Oh, I do. So there you go. Like an old workhorse, we are trudging our way through the Fantastic Four films. We may be at the pinnacle, I guess. I think we are. And then after this, we're off to the glue factory. <laughs> and thank God. So if you could leave a like, that would be right, terrific. Yes. Uh, because we, of course, are talking Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer from 2007. I'd probably call it the drudgery of the Silver Surfer. Yes. Not because the movie itself was drudgery, but it seems like he's not enjoying his job, you know, really? There's not a lot of rising of the Silver Surfer. No. It's more like, oh, here we go, oh, clocking in I'm and off, this, to, off to find a new planet for Galactus to eat. I enjoy this one the most of all the Fantastic Four movies that have come out so far. Sure. And it's weird that in this movie that I feel finally kind of sticks the landing in terms of owning how silly it is, having a bit of fun with it. They sort of finally nailed down the characterizations. Yeah. They didn't go the extra mile and make the villain a big purple man with a big pointy helmet. And he's like, you're all doomed. Right? And people are like, who's this big guy? Right? Up to? That'd be fun. And we, in the tradition of movies of this era, they're just like, just make him a cloud. Big cloud, that's what we do now. So lame. So yeah, that's how I remember this movie. It's just the one where Galactus is a cloud. It massively lets down this okay movie. Let's talk I think about it's pretty solid, but I we'll, think we'll it's get fine. into it. All right. The thing is, at the time, I remember, and we talked about this last week, I remember liking it much more than the previous film. And you were wondering if it's Stockholm Syndrome somehow. Yes, that's right. But there's still so much to hate. Okay, but I do want to talk about some good additions to the lore. Yes. Fantastica is mostly accurate to what that is right. in some incarnations. What I enjoyed about that is that we, Reed Richards has been working on his little secret ride sure. for everybody. And then it arrives and Johnny Storm's like, oh my God, that's amazing. Really? Because it looks dumb. <laughs> it looks like a big bathtub is yeah, what it, is what it looks what like. It, that's what a it bunch looks... of bathtubs like welded together. But that is what it looks like in no, the I know, comics. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's accurate, yeah. but I'm just questioning... Johnny Storm. <laughs> I think it was like, the brand on it, though. Oh, because it was, was really a Dodge. Yeah. He, had a, he had a... Why are they flying coach and he's building Dodge flying car prototypes? Right. How did those two things mesh together? I don't know. The other thing I like about this, Sue Storm's not good in this, I will say. And we'll talk about more the performance at the end. Like, she's written poorly. I think Jessica yeah, right. Alba is just doing what she's supposed to do. Right. She's all like, why can't I get married? <laughs> right, right. Shut up. But there is a moment where she says to Dr. Doom, hey, I can create a force field inside someone's body and explode them if I want to. I'm like, wow, that's dark. And then, you know, at a one point, uh, she spies uh, Mr. Fantastic on mm. his bachelor party. You yeah. know, he's at a nightclub and he's dancing with some beautiful ladies and she gets real mad at him. And then she says, but it's okay because you don't know what I got up to at my bachelorette party. And I'm like, did she murder a guy? <laughs> did her and all her friends like get together yeah, and murder absolutely. a guy? Is that the dark secret? I also think the Silver Surfer is yes. great. Mm -hmm. The flying in at the start is really ominous. How the pyramids are covered in snow and whatever. They mo-capped Doug Jones, voice of Lawrence Fishburne. I think it works really well. So Doug Jones, of course, famous for Shape of Water, the current series of Star Trek. Abe Sapien. Abe Sapien. He's done a... I know... Look, he's in other things, and I know <laughs> I didn't name them all, 
but you don't need to yell at us about it. Oh, well, I'll be quiet then. <laughs> I also think Johnny chasing him through the streets of the city is great. Mm -hmm. And I love that effect, how he morphs through the board. Yeah, I think that's quite cool. Mm. I know it's still kind of a 2007 silvery effect and it's not great from that mm -hmm. respect, I guess. You know what my favourite power of his is? Because mm -hmm. obviously he's got morph through the board, he's got fly about, he's got affect people's molecules. He'll shoot he's, a thing? He's got a vague sort of cosmic blast kind of thing, yeah. but my favourite power of him is his storytelling abs. <laughs> <laughs> Because at one point he's, <laughs> yeah. he's he's been tied up by the government. They've, they've caught yeah. him and they're like, we're going to get some secrets out of you. But then the Invisible Woman shows up and asks to hear his story and he, and he tells it through. Peek into my abs. Peek into my abs and I've got a story for you. Yeah. So I guess that's a power independent of his Silver Surfer powers. That's oh, a power like, of his race. Guess because he doesn't true. have the board at the, that the point. The natives of the planet Zenla all can, yeah. can tell stories through their abs, maybe. <laughs> I also think that Johnny Storm's characterization is good in this because he learns a lesson. Mm. He's kind of unbearable in these movies up to the point where he starts learning a lesson. And then at the end, which actually changed because originally it was Reed's idea for him to take on all the powers, but he takes on all the powers of the Fantastic Four. Like the Super Skrull, uh, he beats up Doctor Doom, which yes. I really quite uh -huh. enjoy. So this movie, uh, obviously the finale of this movie, they're like, why don't we just use the same finale as the previous one where we're all the, the Fantastic Four use all their powers in unison. And but, but what do you do at the end of a Fantastic Four movie? Some people this use their powers and some people just kick back. <laughs> That's what I'm suggesting. That's right. Yeah. You might think that I hadn't thought this through, <laughs> but I had, and my plan perfect ending to a Fantastic Four movie is some of them use their powers and some of them leave. They go on holiday or something. There is a moment in this where the Invisible Woman is... The, she meets the Silver Surfer for the first time. Yeah. It's moments before she has to push the button, which is mm. going to activate the field that cancels out his powers and what have you. Sure. She's right on the cusp of doing it, but she can't quite get to it. And I'm like, just hit it with a force field. Yeah. Just, that's that's you, what you, you do. You can do that. You wouldn't even see it's you do whole it. Thing, yeah, right? Doesn't she have you, to can, you could blame somebody else for it. Doesn't she have to assemble it a little bit, though? Nah, just poke at it. I think she had to assemble some stuff. Well, she, she could do that. Yeah, it doesn't really matter, does it? In this it? movie, she can also look through walls. She can make invisible... Yeah, okay. it's called a window. Oh, she can... <laughs> <laughs> so there's a moment in this also which the director was worried about putting in. Tim's story, he's back where Ben Grimm becomes human again briefly. And he's like, uh -huh. yeah, I've got cool flame powers. And Johnny Storm's like, come on, I'm a rock man. Come on. Mm -hmm. And they're like, is that sad for Ben Grimm to, to just get his human form back and then they take it away from him? But that makes sense to me, though, because in the last movie, they built a machine and he made that choice. And if he didn't want to do it anymore, just build the machine again. Right? It would have been fine. Sure. So I don't think that's really a debate you no. need to have. This movie starts with uh, there's a, a wedding's going to take place. Yeah. Uh, finally, the wedding between Reed Richards and Sue Storm. They're finally going to tie the knot. And there's just a just a lot of home truths being told. Like, oh my goodness. Al Alicia, Ben Grimm's girlfriend, is just like, you suck, Johnny Storm, <laughs> and everyone hates you. You got a bad attitude. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. I'm going to be me. Johnny Storm's going to be Johnny Storm. <laughs> Bad stuff. Here we go. Johnny Storm's date mentions that, how, how do you date the human torch? And she's like, fireproof lingerie and a lot of aloe vera. So he's just burning women. He's just burning he's just women burning in the women. bedroom. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, the Reed Richards stretching effect has never been good. <laughs> no. And they have certainly not perfected it here. And it is not highlighted any worse than in that horrible dance sequence. Oh, yeah. I mean, the yeah. dance sequence is horrible. Uh huh. And the way he's really into it. I found that, that was, that. look, I, again, overall, I kind of like this movie, but that was very cringy. I had to move, go to another room and come back while I was but watching that. But is that the point? And that's point. what I did in the cinema as well. <laughs> I left and watched something else from whatever year this came 2007. out. 2007. I watched. You played Time Crisis I in the foyer. I played Time Crisis in the foyer, that's right. <laughs> Maybe it's a Spider-Man 3 situation. Exactly. Where what he thinks a cool guy would do in this situation. Yes, I don't exactly. Know. Also, he never really does anything beyond... Like, your comic book Reed Richards can become like a... Like a huge, like a... Like a block. Like a big block or something. Yeah. He can become like... He can like, disguise himself. Disguise himself. He can become, you know, like thin as a bloody bloody strand of hair or something. Yeah. You know, this guy never... He's just using up. palm pilots with these <laughs> right. weird rubbery thumbs. Right, exactly. So why in these movies are they always having weird naked public hijinks? I mean, obviously it's because Jessica Alba, you know, you get her in her underwear. Like, I, I understand that. Right. But it's always... Weird, baffling public displays of lunacy <laughs> that everybody's just witnessing. Uh -huh. I don't know why they get really sponsorship deals or they're respected because at all. Because of the naked lunacy. <laughs> That's why. That's I, don't get I bet it. they have like I bet they have like team meetings every week, and they're like, "Can we do some more naked lunacy?" Yeah, because we get this is where we we're get masters the big bucks. of marketing, right. viral marketing. Also, again, I like the Silver Surfer. 
But I also loved the revelation that at the end he goes, I'm going to sacrifice myself to destroy Galactus. And he does it or whatever. Spoiler alert, he's alive. Who gives a shit? There are sequels to this that never got made. We'll talk about oh. it. But that means that he could have done that at any point in his career of destroying multiple civilizations. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I just wanted to save my planet. You still could have saved your planet and sacrificed yourself and saved billions, trillions of lives. Mm -hmm. But not, you meet a nice woman and you go, I'll tell a story through abs and then I'll reminds do the me, right reminds thing. Reminds me of my gal back home. But the original version of the Silver Surfer had no memory of his past. Maybe they give him his memory back and he decides to... Perfect. I don't know. Yeah. Why am I fixing this movie from fucking 13 years ago? Nobody cares. Exactly, because that's Ben's job. <laughs> Hey Ben, we need uh, we need a really competent edit of this film. We'll link it below when you've done. That's right. We need you to fix this. More naked hijinks, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> That's what gets the clicks. Uh, Doctor Doom, what do you think? My main concern with Doctor Doom is he gains the ability to do some vague cosmic stuff. He was already like he's pretty formidable, he's wasn't he? Very formidable. He can shoot lightning. What more do you want, Doctor Doom? Surfboard. Yes, surf's up. I he wanted can. to yell, surf's up, and he never got the chance. It's his one regret. It's true, Did yeah. he go to jail? No, he sunk to the bottom of the ocean. Is he dead? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. But, I mean, the ultimate fate mm. in some water. Yeah, that's you know right. what I mean? No one's ever survived that in comic books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, it all ends with a weird Japanese wedding for no reason. That's um, right. It's, I didn't. I liked it much less than when I first saw it. But it is better than the previous one. Yeah, right. But bad also. I kind of liked it more this time around. Okay. Very Maybe it's the weird Japanese wedding at the end. It might be that. So for trivia. Trivia time every time. Never stop. Here we go. Trivia time. Our famous segment. That's right. Uh, Jessica Alba, upon receiving criticism about her performance in the film, said that the director, Tim Story, told her, It looks too real. It looks too painful. Can you be prettier when you cry? Cry pretty, Jessica. Don't do that thing with your face. Just make it flat. <laughs> we can CGI the tears in. Wow. So, yeah. I don't remember her crying at all. Yeah, really. she's like, my wedding. Uh, okay, right, 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 right. There was a surfboard I guess man. I tune that out whenever I see a woman crying. I'm just like, nope, not happening. <laughs> Originally, Nick Fury was going to be in this oh. film, but he was written out of the script and replaced with General Hager, Captain Holt. But who cares because that guy explodes at the end. Oh, he really does, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He's but again, I feel like Doctor Doom's lightning would have done just as good a job. You Agreed. Know? Also, Stanley cameos as himself. Yes, that's which right. might be the only time in a Marvel film. That's right. No, actually, Captain Marvel. That's right. He's yeah. on the bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't at me. He was born for that role in many ways. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Yeah. Do you want to hear about the sequel? Yes. Because I know you do. So, all the cast signed on for three films. That includes Julian McMahon's Doctor Doom. So, if you're mm. wondering, was he going to get out of that water? Yes. Swim up. Use his electricity to get this out of it. Uses electricity powers, <laughs> yeah. Electricity. Make friends with some electric eels. Yeah. Now they swim into safety. Jamie Foxx did. Jessica Alba wanted uh, to have Franklin Richards appear in number three. Ah, uh, the son. That feels like the natural progression of these films, right? Yeah, I think so. What would they have done with him, though? Because he's an amazing cosmic character who can do pretty much anything. Probably a boy who's... Good at, I don't know, chess or whatever the fuck they do in these kind of movies. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And they're like, when is he going to get his powers? I'd hope he'd be annoying. Mm. That's <laughs> me right. too. Yeah? Uh, Tim Story said he would have liked to have Jimon Honsu as Black Panther. Oh, just add to his bloody resume of being in the Marvel and DC Universe in various Absolutely. smallish roles. I think that would have been a terrific addition. Also, you could have done the Black Panther origin story, which is linked to that of the Fantastic That's Four. That's right, and he's dumb. And he's dumb. We've got a video on it, I think, don't yep, we? Yeah, we do. Uh, Don Payne, who was the co-writer on this, stated that he always loved the Inhumans, probably not now because of that terrible show, uh, yeah. the Skrulls, the Puppet Master, Annihilus, and the Negative Zone. So maybe there were some things he would like to incorporate. Just maybe do all of those in one. So I think so too, it. yeah. Yeah. But of course, uh, plans for this third instalment after the box office results of this. Really? Yeah, not great. They were out the window as well as a Silver Surfer solo film. So there you go. And then, of course, it was eventually rebooted in 2015 because they had to. Otherwise, they would lose the rights to the film, which was why the first one was made and why all of these get made. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And why do they get made, ultimately? Ultimately, that's a really good question. Isn't it though, yeah. And now, you know, who knows what's going to be happening in the future. But before that, of course, we've got to come back. Fantastic Four 2015, which I haven't seen since 2015. Yeah. Made a solemn vow, but we're happy to break that to do whatever this is. We could just not break the vow. <laughs> That's a good point. We might. We wouldn't be breaking a vow and we wouldn't have to see a bad movie. How about this? Yes. This has to get 20,000 likes and we're not coming back. We're not doing it. How many likes do you normally get? I don't fucking know. <laughs> 
I don't know. I right. genuinely well, don't okay. know. I don't look at it. Well, <laughs> yeah. either the entire internet's going to bound together and get us 20,000 likes to make us suffer, or we're going to get 10 likes. Yeah, okay. I'm fine with either. You happy? Everyone's happy? Uh, so we said <laughs> 20,000 likes and we'll do fan four stick. That's what we said, right? Thanks. And you're going to reveal to me whether we got that amount of likes. And I'm excited because I can just walk out that door. We're already recording, Mason. We're in the video. Oh, <laughs> it's a bad outcome for me, but all right. Also, I did watch it, so. Yeah, absolutely. You for did. my own enjoyment, but I don't yeah. want to do this video. So yeah, if you could leave another like on this one as well. That would yeah, be great. terrific. Yeah, if we can hit that again. Cool. Anyways, uh, everybody knows the reason why this was made. The window, as always, was closing on Fox to make a Fantastic Four movie. Otherwise they lose the rights. Otherwise they right? lose the rights. They had to at least start it to get it into productions. I Turns see. out you don't have to actually release it like they did with the original. That's right, yeah. But did you know Marvel Studios actually offered to give Fox an extension on rebooting Daredevil in exchange for the Fantastic Four film rights along with all the expanded cosmic universe? And they went, no. Know. That's wild. And then they ended up just losing them all anyway. So <laughs> that's, that's doubly <laughs> wild. Here's the thing about this movie. I think up until they get their powers, yes. there is genuinely some good stuff in it because it's supposed to be and this is the idea behind Josh Trank and we'll the director and we'll talk about kind of why this fell apart it was supposed to be a blend of Raimi Spider-Man Cronenberg's The Fly Scanners Chronicle and it's a bit of the Marvel Ultimates thrown in there as well that bit, version yeah. of Fantastic mm -hmm. Four and the trailer became the most watched trailer in 20th Century Fox's history people were raring to see this Yeah, I think the idea of almost a horror themed Fantastic Four movie where it's a bit of a burden to be Ben Grimm because it hurts when you know when you are yeah. when you're covered in rocks and you're all made of rocks and you're not through. wearing underpants you're not wearing either. underpants any time you'd, ever you'd feel an intense, the intense pain of existence and also drafty in your nether yeah. bits so I think there are some good ideas in here but overall this is a fucking disaster yeah right this is horrible well, look I've written a note here it just says after the Fantastic Four get their powers things somehow get more boring <laughs> yes so, but yeah look this movie is recent enough that we actually <laughs> talked about it on our podcast The Weekly Planet when it came out subscribe on iTunes please do but at the time I remember saying specifically this movie to me as it came out, not mm. as it was originally intended, yeah, is think? like a biopic of a scientist who wasn't very interesting. <laughs> also, how old is he supposed to be? Because it opens mm -hmm. where he's at school, he's a little boy, yep. and the teacher's like, you'll never do anything, you'll never make a flying car, you're dumb, and everybody <laughs> hates you, and redo your assignment. I guess it's one of those things where, again, I used to be a teacher. Yep. So if a kid gets up and does a report, and they're nine years old and they go, I want to invent teleportation and I want to, you know, do a flying car. You're not like, you're a fucking idiot. Can I've you come back tomorrow with a more reasonable idea? I've written a note here. The fir My first note says, Reed's teacher should quit. He's lost the love for his profession. That's right. He should go back to voicing Homer Simpson. That's right. <laughs> for a million dollars a week. I would have rather seen a movie about that guy, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy to me, though, that then when it flashes forward to them at the end of high school... Where they're clearly they're two, 28. They're two grown men. And the funny thing about that is you see a file for the thing later in the movie and it says he was born in 86. So if this came out in 2015, that guy was 28, 29 years old <laughs> and still in high school is all I'm saying. That's a continuity error that we're going to use to mock him. So that's good. <laughs> I am excited for that. It would be less jarring if they'd also aged up all the other children yes. in the, the high school science competition. If they all were in their 20s, you'd go, okay, well, we're doing that kind of kid That Smallville sitcom. kind of. Yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. But to be like, to have the two men lumber over to another child and be like, give us your, your science project. We're going to teleport a kid. And the kid's like, oh, this guy probably has a mortgage. I better do what he says. <laughs> what I also don't understand about that science fair Again, the teacher is like, do a real project. This isn't magic. Even if you think that's magic, that's the best thing in the room. If, even if you thought he did it with mirrors? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's right. It's incredible. But the teacher doesn't love it. But obviously, Dr. Storm comes yeah. in and he says... He's perusing the local high school. <laughs> just in case there are some kid geniuses out there. You know, maybe that uh, volcano can uh, solve world hunger or something. I will give it to them that he was keeping an eye on Reed. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. But at the same time, I won't give it to them because this is not a good <laughs> no. movie. So Dr. Storm says to them, I think you've cracked interdimensional travel. But the model plane they used to teleport, it comes back severely burnt and with pieces missing. <laughs> so if they were like, we've cracked into dimensional travel, do you want to do that? I'd be like, no, I don't want to come back on fire with pieces missing. But what if Sue says, I also have this vial of dirt that I keep on me. What do you think of this now? Oh, you know, my weakness is a vial of dirt. <laughs> There's some clear edits in this where Victor Von Doom was supposed to be Victor Domashev. Victor Domashev. 
not Victor Von Doom. And they, they've ADR'd it yeah, over the top. Yeah, because uh-huh. he kind of looks down his file and he goes, I can't believe you've got Victor Von Doom here. <laughs> Famous comic book villain, everybody right. watching this. Uh-huh. There is a line when Sue Storm, speaking to Victor Von Doom, and he's being quite negative, and she goes, oh, Dr. Doom over here. <laughs> that only makes sense if Dr. Doom is already an established character in the fiction of the world in which you live, right? Because otherwise, what's that reference? Who, who do you call Doctor Doom? That's not a thing. Unless you've already, there's already a comic book character called Doctor Doom, right? Yeah, that makes sense. That's not a joke, especially if your name's Doom. <laughs> makes perfect sense, and this movie makes mm. sense. My favourite thing that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Great segue. One of the earliest things is when, you know, they graduate high school and Reed Richards is on the fast track to the big city. He goes to the city. It took and, him 28 years. <laughs> and there's this there. slow, dramatic pan with this swell orchestra up to just a boring office building (laughs) it's got Baxter on the side of it and he's like wow the Baxter building a building like in the big city it's not even that big but at the big city building a medium sized building and then uh, you know at the very least I would hope that he would go in there and it's just drudgery and there's just office workers (laughs) making copies and he's like wow everyone and they're like oh but everybody else is thrilled to be working in this place also and i get it because he's from you know he's from oyster bay he's from this small town kind of thing and he's thrilled but we the audience are not thrilled no because we've been to the city before i guess it should more reflect the building that they get at the end that they clearly added very last minute Uh uh-huh you know they look over that facility and they go wow look at this facility slash green screen we can't say anything <laughs> isn't it incredible all the all the things that we get to work on now what do you think of character designs how, how you're saying we? specifically what do i think of this version of the thing yeah sure it's all right but again he Not should bad. put some underpants on yeah. i think the casting is okay here i know one of the heavy criticisms is jamie bell is much smaller than the thing but sure. it's, there's a transformation there he gets covered in rocks that's true. And that's how it works. Mm-hmm. Do you like how they go drunk into another dimension and then one of them puts their hand in a glowing puddle? That's yeah, pretty good, it's, isn't it's it? That's right. They're all very intelligent people, aren't they? Aren't they? I don't they're know. They're winning science fairs. Oh, no, they're not winning science fairs. I they're forgot. Lo- they're science fair losers, <laughs> and that's probably the chip on their shoulder that makes them become drunk and go to an alternate dimension. Obviously, the worst character design is Dr. Doom. Yeah, it always is for some reason. How do they do it? And this is way worse than the other ones. By a long way. So he's a terraforming, head-exploding, melted, crash-test dummy of a man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. His eyes are too close together. He's got a big garbage bag cloak. Yes. He sometimes glows. He's like, ah, oh, look at my powers. He's just moving mountains. Where's your Doctor Doom stuff? Right? Barely any Doctor Doom stuff. And look, again... And he's only in it for like 12 minutes. Would well, you know the funny thing is, he was supposed to be the Herald of Galactus. The original version of this is not an hour 40. It's like two hours 27. When they go into the other dimension, it's a dead world and Galactus is there. And they're like, oh no. So That's Doom, cool. they film this. Yeah. So Doom stays and becomes this version of the Silver Surfer. Makes more sense. Yeah. The machine that they, they use to travel through parallel dimensions is built in this sort of static time lapse. Yep. It makes it look like an educational video. <laughs> it's not exciting. You don't think there's some educational value to that? No. No. Oh. If anything, watching this makes you dumber. <laughs> So what was also baffling about this movie coming out in 2015, and I know it was reshot, but they're really doing the blue light in the sky thing. And by that point, it was so far done. When I saw it, I'm like, really? There's probably a a Netflix category for it. (laughs) Just put in blue sky beam and you'll find a whole bunch of stuff. And just that whole last sequence of them coming together and they're just all tumbling over each other and the stretching ability, he doesn't really do that much with it again. It's mostly long punches. I like that he can change his face. That's something that he can do in the comics. That is true, yeah. That, you know, where he can actually disguise himself. But at the end, Doctor Doom just goes up into the sky beam and he disintegrates and he's gone forever or whatever. But who who cares? <laughs> and then when they come out of it, there's this, again, that swell of music. Yes, like, that's Look right. at these heroes. And there is a crater the size of the fucking moon. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, we did it. So so many people... You also did this because you built these machines. This is your fault. That's right. I know that like Doom came back and did this, but this is you. You did this. Mm-hmm. And you're bad people and you should all be in jail. They should not... <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Every, everyone who made this movie should be in jail. Wow. <laughs> so the fictional movie. characters should be in jail yep. and, the, and the producers of the film should also be in I'll jail. I'll go this far. Everybody who's involved in any version of the Fantastic Four movies ever should all be in jail. What about people who watch the Fantastic Four yes. movies? James, no. <laughs> I can hear the cops coming now. And then at the end, because they're like, give, give us this facility, we want somewhere to work. And then there's that palling about... And they're like, what should we call ourselves? It's like that Avengers Assemble yeah, moment yeah, right, from right, Ultron right. Uh-huh. or whatever. And just 
the bit where Johnny Storm goes, what what are you like going to be called? The bloody thing that nobody wanted. What are you doing? Brutal, right? Why are you saying shit? So you know, mean. You've, you've barely spoken. All right. He's up. Yeah, all right. And then they're like, I've got a good name. Wait for it. Wait for it. End of Credit. the movie. Credits, great. Fantastic. Incredible. That's, that's true. <laughs> And the wig. The Sue Storm oh, wig. Sue Storm wig, oh my God. Just wildly fluctuating between scenes. Do you want some miscellaneous notes? I love Meso's it. Meso's miscellaneous I notes. I love it. At one point, Reed looks at all the awards they've won at the Baxter building and it says, Baxter Institute develops the first quad series super microchip. Boring. <laughs> so boring. It doesn't say Baxter Institute develops flying car or a cloaking device. Well, a quad microchip. It's funny that you say that because the flying car was deleted from the movie. Of course it was. Cause you know why? Because it was interesting. Yeah, there was one that Reed made, kind of this jalopy, but there's also concept art of other kind of strange designs, which I think are quite cool. I've written here, Reed and Sue meet cute. And then I've just put dot, dot, dot. It what wasn't interesting. <laughs> no, nothing nothing happens. Uh, at one point, Sue tells Reed his unsupervised experiment we did, he did as a kid could have opened a black hole and swallowed the entire planet. Cool. Tell us some other visually spectacular dramatic things that didn't happen. <laughs> it's good. I like that. You know, tell, don't show. That's what I say. Uh, Victor started the Quantum Gate project when he was younger than you. You know, you are a fully grown adult man. Uh, the negative zone is just a mountain range in the dark. That's what it is. <laughs> At one point, the, a screen shows up that's Ben Grimm. He's in his late twenties, yep. but also it says confirmed kills forty three. Yeah, he's doing. I don't well. want to know the lovable, <laughs> the lovable Yancey Street orphan superhero loved by every member of the public has killed forty three men. And that's only confirmed kills. Doesn't say men, and it doesn't say not adults. women and children. <laughs> that's very true. And look, I have one final note. Uh, it says in this movie, everyone's great at physics but bad at chemistry interpersonal chemistry. <laughs> I'm James, I got them. Have you done it again? I don't, but I did it again though, didn't yeah. I? Don't ask how I did it again. Just know that I did it again. <laughs> so I do want to talk about how this movie kind of fell apart, but before I do that, would you like to hear some things that were deleted? Yes. Doctor Doom would have been a Latverian dictator, but Simon Kinberg rewrote the screenplay who did a lot of reshoots on this. Mm -hmm. He's worked on a lot of the Fox, X-Men and Fantastic Four stuff, making Doctor Doom an antisocial programmer and cutting Mole Man and Galactus. Because that's what we need more of in real life, programmers and not oh my Galactus. my goodness. This is what else was cut. Fantastic Car mentioned. The posters show a crumbling city. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you see All the that? cities are fine, I yeah. think, as far as I know. Originally, the robot Herbie was going to appear in the film, but the studio vetoed the idea because they didn't want to raise comparisons with Tony Stark's Jarvis or the Star Wars droids. Doombots were also going to show up. Oh, at, my God. At one point at the end, they defeat Dr. Doom, and it's not really him, it's a Doombot. Uh, in all the trailers, and they kept playing this after the movie came out, there's a moment where the thing jumps from a helicopter. That's right. Not nah. in the movie, yeah. So the 3D conversion, the money, it was actually used for reshoots, and the reshoots bumped to the budget from 122 million to 155 yep. but it only made 167 million mm. oh, worldwide oh dear oh yeah. dear and when of course this movie came out uh josh trank put this tweet out which i'm sure people remember a year ago i had a fantastic version of this and would have received great reviews you'll probably never see it that's reality though what actually happened was and again this is all speculation we don't really know it's said that josh trank displayed erratic and very isolated behavior on set this led to clashes between trank and the producers over the direction of the film mm -hmm. i wouldn't say he would be entirely to blame for this maybe he had a vision and they pushed back on that we don't really know kind of the situation in particular mm. but also it's rumored that josh trank had some small dogs that were left in his rented house while he was filming this and they caused a hundred thousand dollars worth of damage to the property also, apparently, he had a fist fight with Miles Teller. Oh, wow. That was also after he pushed the studio to cast Miles Teller. He was like, this is the guy I want. To and fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it. I will do it on set. <laughs> yeah. And after this all happened, he tweeted, I'll never be working on a comic book movie again. But he did actually write a review on Letterboxd. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He's back. I can read some snippets here if Please you're Please do, yeah. You I can say this. no and I can not read them if you want. No, I think you should. You've... You've set us up for greatness, so go for it. So this is just bits and pieces, but you can read the whole thing. Here it is on the screen. The movie is all right. I was expecting it to be much worse than it was. I literally haven't seen it since two weeks before it came out, and I was in a heavily fucking traumatised state of mind. Why? Uh, I'll save that for another time. Everyone in this film is a great actor, and overall there is a movie in there somewhere, and the cast deserves to be in that movie. Everyone who worked on Fan 4 Stick, he's written it that way, which mm -hmm. some people refer to this film as. That's right. Clearly wanted to make that movie, but ultimately it, it wasn't. You know, is there going to be a release? The Trank cut, you know, the same way with Zack Snyder, but he's like, look, I'm not Zack Snyder, so, you know, I can understand why that isn't the case. But he says, I don't regret it. It's part of me. 
I hope Peyton Reed makes the next Fantastic Four movie and crushes it and that I get a cameo. So I feel like he kind of has come out of this in, in a more positive way. He's still making movies. Hopefully he'll bounce back from this. Or maybe he won't, I don't know. Is this anything though? Is there value in watching this? I was bored the whole time. Yeah, the I know. The whole right? way through. Yeah, it's kind of rough. Not, uh... Do you think there are some nuggets of some good ideas in here? I mean, there sure are some nuggets. <laughs> of poop. Got him. I got him. Got him again. I got him how does again. he do it? I don't know. I don't know how I do it. He doesn't even rehearse please, him. Please don't ask how I do it. <laughs> don't ask. Anyways, we did it. We've done all the Fantastic Four movies. I didn't like this. I'm going to be honest. I, I had like a bad either. time no, doing these movies. No, I don't movies. think overall, I don't think I enjoyed the experience. It was a bad experience. Yeah. I, I 100% get how Josh Trank feels. I completely relate to him on every level. <laughs> if anything, I've had a more traumatic experience. <laughs> I'm curious though, what's what's the best one of these? Genuinely, what I think Silver Surfer is, but what do people think? Is there a great animated cartoon? Mm. Is there a video game that people like? I what, know you love the it? Silver Surfer animated show. Oh my God, that's a really yeah. good one. That's very Kirby-esque. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. You're not going to believe how many times we do this a week. Once. Once, that's right, if you can believe that. But they actually go up early at bigsandwich.co along with the extended audio edition mm. uh we also have bonus podcasts our podcast the weekly planet where we talk movies and comics and tv shows that comes out a day early mm -hmm. early videos movie commentaries a bunch of other stuff anyways i've been mr sunday movies on twitter i'm at wikipedia brown on twitter i don't know that's what are you what are have you? a fantastic week everyone yep <laughs> good. Hey, he's done it again i've that done it again haven't <laughs> i i've done it do not ask how i do do don't you I, you've got that look do not ask that's a legitimately a threat do not ask <laughs> anyway grab that gem you guys we'll see you next week goodbye